Good morning, Pat Ziemer here with MagnaWave for this Tuesday morning edition of the MagnaWave Office Hours. We come to you every Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock Eastern Time to answer any questions you may have with regard to PEMF therapy, uh, machines, training, health and wellness with regards to PMF, whatever it may be, uh, I try to answer whatever questions you may have. If I don't have the answer, I will certainly get it. I will reach out to uh, doctors and professionals that we deal with to get us the questions uh, that you're looking for and post them on the page or cover them in a future <clears throat> edition of the MagnaWave Office Hour. So we're glad to be here. I ask that uh, if you're watching this morning, share this broadcast. Just share it with your friends. They may have questions, things that they want to know and uh, and ask so please be kind enough to share this broadcast with your friends little uh, homework or a little uh, house cleaning to do from last week uh, as you know if you call in and share a testimonial or ask a question that we can have a conversation about I give away some gear each week and last what we like to have happen after this after you win this gear or you get this gear for participating with me is that you send your information uh, to our office so we make sure we have the correct address and so on and so forth. So last week I said send that confirming information to info at magnawavepemf.com and I was wrong. It is support at magnawavepemf.com. So if you were on the call last week and you have some gear coming, uh, resend your information, your name and your correct address to support at magnawavepemf.com and we'll make sure that we get uh, what we promised out to you. So again, it's support at magnawavepemf.com to make sure you get the uh, gear that you're looking for from calling in and participating on the program. So you can do that. Send me a text uh, if you'd like for me to call you back. We do it that way because I only have one line that I deal with so I don't have multiple people calling. Send a text to 502-599-9722 uh, good, I got that number correct. 502-599-9722. If you'd like to visit, share a testimonial or ask your question, it's really great to do it that way because we can have a conversation and quite often when we have those conversations we go deeper than someone just asking a question in the chat box and then I give an answer and there could be subsequent information that you'd like to have. So send me a text and I'll give you a call and we can have a conversation. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, daily we have a situation here or a, pro a program here at MagnaWave where we put out tidbits of information with regard to history, uh, protocols, uh, how PEMF works on Alexa. So you can get a daily dose of uh, PEMF information every day by uh, subscribing to Alexa. You can do that on your phone, uh, on an Android or an iOS device. The apps are available. Or if you have an Echo device at home, you can go to your uh, Amazon account and add MagnaWave flash briefings uh, to your Alexa and get the briefings uh, every day. Soon we will have specific question and answer uh, skills on Alexa for our practitioners. They can say, hey Alexa, how do I treat this? And they'll receive that information uh, from Alexa uh, so they can better utilize the device in their practice. Okay, enough said for house cleaning and situations uh, like that. Again, uh, send me a text if you'd like to visit. Today, uh, for those of you who call in and visit with me, certainly we will have, it's winter time uh, around a lot of the country, so we'll have hoodies uh, and we'll also be, you can have a choice to get this insulated uh, tumbler, you know, keep stuff cool for hours and or hot for hours. How do it know? That's the biggest question. How do it know what it's supposed to do? Keep it hot or cold? But we got those uh, large uh, capacity. So if you'd like to have one of those, it's your choice. If you give me a call today or let me call you back uh, to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. So let's get on with some questions that have been asked. And we get this question a lot uh, on our practitioner page, uh, uh, not uh, practitioner page, as well as the MagnaWave corporate page when people just want to know how the MagnaWave works. And the question is uh, success with herniated discs, uh, infl inflamed discs, herniated discs in the body. That's really how we got involved uh, in this business. My wife took a fall. She was a teacher, fell on the ice. Uh, at her school and landed square on her back and her head and really messed up her back and ended up with three herniated discs that caused her a lot of pain for several years. She had, was very limited mobility uh, in her shoulder area and was in pain
pain all the time. I was in the therapy business already at that time doing laser therapy, low-powered PEMF therapy, and I was able to get her some relief, but never any reversal. Not until we went to a conference in Orlando and they asked for a volunteer and she said, hey, they're not gonna help my pain and my range of motion in my shoulder, so I'll volunteer. And she went down, they treated her for eight minutes uh, with a high-powered machine, much like what we use today at MagnaWay. And for eight minutes, she stood up, total mobility and no pain. Didn't last a long time, maybe a day or so. So needless to say, she bought a machine on the spot and we were in business. But what happened was, is we got, after several treatments, we got her a herniated disc situation to a point that she would get three to four weeks of relief after just two or three treatments. Now it took several treatments in a row. As you know, we often discuss the more you treat, the longer the result. So we treated her several times, stopped, and she got a couple of weeks worth of relief. We treated another series of treatments, 30 days actually, daily, uh, or every other day, and stopped, and she got four weeks worth of relief. And that's the way it's been for the last 12 years. She treats herself two or three times, and she gets three to four weeks worth of relief uh, in her herniated disc area. She goes back to the doctor for her physicals and they say, oh my gosh, we, we need to do something with this with your back. Does that, doesn't that kill you? No, she's fine. It doesn't bother her because she does maintain the inflammation and keep things at bay. So to answer the question, we've had very good success with herniated discs and, and uh, lumbar problems and back pain and so on and so forth. Why? Because we're able to help the body better handle the oxygenation of its cells. We, the, our our process makes the cell walls more permeable, allowing them to take on more oxygen, which helps relieve inflammation, thereby relieving pain, which is the main protocol, the main operation of what we do with these devices with regard to inflammation reduction and pain relief. So uh, that's there. It's a great, great question, and I apologize for being redundant, but we have different people viewing, and they just like to know uh, how to get those questions answered or what it what it will do. Again, if you'd like to visit with me, text me your name, or your, your name, text me your name, <clears throat> and I'll get right back to you, uh, give you a call, and we can have a conversation about whatever it is uh, you would like to know. Uh, here's another good question that received. Anyone use laser therapy in partnership with MagnaWave as a complementary therapy? Certainly, there are a lot of modalities that are very complementary to MagnaWave, laser being one of them. Uh, light therapy, uh, light emitting diodes. People often confuse light emitting diodes with, with laser, but light emitting diodes are very beneficial to be used together. Microcurrent, uh, TENS units, massage, acupuncture, many, many different therapies, uh, vibration uh, therapy, heat therapy, used in conjunction. A lot of practitioners like to use complementary therapies uh, when they're doing their their work on people. And yes, a laser can be very beneficial. The primary difference, <clears throat> I sold lasers and worked with lasers prior to getting involved with our MagnaWave. And the, the thing about a laser was is you have to be site specific. So you're going to do the shoulder. There's a You got to spend some time on the shoulder to go around. To do a whole animal or a whole person Person with a laser becomes pretty involved and it can take some time whereas when you go and you're treating the shoulder you might go here 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 and here all over the shoulder with the laser now they do make lasers with larger heads but you still have to move it as you're doing that doesn't that's not a bad thing that's just the way the the function of the device works whereas with MagnaWave you put that coil on your shoulder and you do the entire area of the shoulder uh, going in if that's if that's what you're doing you can come back if an acupuncturist wants to use a, their a, a laser I'm talking about acupuncturist I had an acupuncturist that was in the office with me yesterday that's why that came to mind but if an acupuncturist may use a needle they may use pressure they may use uh, magnetic therapy they may use la laser therapy to stimulate the acupuncture point and in our training that, that we go through uh, for utilizing magnoid, for example, if I talk about treating a sore back, we'll show what, what the best way is to approach and treat that back. But at the same time, I show uh, or we show where the supporting acupuncture points are 
or for a sore back or whatever uh, issue that you're particularly dealing with. So that's how it, it rolls out uh, with regard to utilizing a laser. A laser is excellent for open wound healing uh, to help close a wound. A MagnaWave is also very beneficial to do that so they can be used in, in concert together, uh, very complementary in the use of the two together. Uh, with regard to the proper therapy that you're using on a person, a small animal, or a horse. Looks like you got a bunch of people with us so far this morning. We certainly appreciate that. Don't forget to share this with your friends. Uh, uh, Brad will put any questions up. So if you ask a question, Brad will throw it up on the screen so I can have a look at it and be able to answer that question for you. Again, if you'd like to talk with me, text your name to 502-599-9972 and I will get back hoodie or one of these pretty neat little uh, insulated uh, mugs here for your hot or cold beverage, whatever it may be. Uh, Got to be one of the greatest inventions of all time because how does it know to keep something hot or keep it cold? I just I don't understand that. Of course, there's a lot of things that, that I don't uh, understand as I go <laughs> as I go through things and I learn things uh, every day. Okay, let's see. Um, see any success stories of treating a dog with a ser seroma on his back well good question a seroma is a pocket of clear uh, fluid that sometimes develops after surgery uh, that's a fluid composed of blood plasma and has been uh, seeped out of a ruptured blood vessel or ruptured small blood vessels uh, in the body so it's a pocket of fluid so to think about it for a second, to take that area and utilize uh, a MagnaWave coil over the area to massage the area, mechanically massage the area to help move fluids out, to clean up situations around that, I would certainly think that it could be very beneficial to use it in those types of situations. Certainly we use uh, MagnaWave after a, a, a surgery uh, in many cases to help reduce the inflammation, relieve pain, and let the body be in a position to better move on towards healing itself. So, yes, uh, I'm, I'm, I, whether or not someone can say that I've d actually treated a seroma uh, on the back of a person, leg, bog, dog, whatever it may be, it will certainly be beneficial to uh, be helpful in those types of uh, situation. So uh, again, if you have any questions, give me a shout or give me a text and I'd be happy to uh, get right back to you. We'll be here this morning as long as I have questions that I've been able to uh, call for the last couple of days uh, to give you that information. And again, if you'd like to uh, talk with me, I'll do that. But once we're completed, then we'll move on because we're all busy and got a lot of things to do uh, throughout the day. So I certainly appreciate you being with me today to uh, have these conversations and answer the questions that you want to have answered. Okay, there is a question that often comes up and it's when uh, it's certainly visible more in the larger animals, the horses and, and so forth, but the question comes, um, and, and we cover this in training, but you know, people just read things and see them and learn them but then when you get out in the into the world you see things differently and it and it, it operates uh, not differently but you have to learn what it's doing I used to tell people all the time they'd say okay how long is it going to take me to learn how to use this device I can show you how to use the device in 20 minutes does that mean that you know what the device will do? Does that mean how the device can best be used in many different situations, many different indications? No. And we can we have all of that information, but I've in the beginning I would explain and explain and explain and people would kind of look at me and say, "Yeah, okay, I get it." But they wouldn't really get it until they went out and administered 20 to 50 to 60 treatments if they were treating small animals or people or horses it takes just a culmination uh, of build up of time to really see the difference I was treating some folks yesterday who came in from Indianapolis a woman and her son and he's had some whiplash issues in an automobile accident and she's a physical therapist and she wanted to see how this would react treating his neck uh, where he has some some issues and we did it and he was amazed at how which quite often happens 
after just an eight minute treatment that he had a great reduction in pain as he shared yesterday from a seven to a three in just a few minutes. And then again, certainly there's always the situation of the more treatments you do, the longer it will last. Whereas then she put it on her neck and didn't feel anything because she didn't have any neck issues to deal with. Now, let's go back to the question. The question is, uh, they've been stating about people talk about muscle twitching and movement while treating does that mean that there is sore soreness in that area out of all the horses this person's treating horses she's been treating regularly once a week always have muscle movement does that mean that they're always sore well here's how I approach it and how I've, I've approached it over the years and I recommend to people when they come in on training Aaron takes them out on the training and they go through things and they learn that what we try to do is scan over the body to look for areas of sensitivity we a person can tell you I it's right here I'm sore here every day is that for because of how I sit in the car how I sit at my desk how I sleep at night the type of pillow I'm using whatever it may be but it's here and so we can treat that area and know where it's at an animal on the other hand can't really tell you that so we will scan over the animal to find areas that will move they will twitch they will pulsate as you go over that areas over those areas now if you turn the device up we can force movement we can mechanically massage an area with movement so if you take the device and you turn it to where you're getting movement all over that doesn't necessarily mean there's soreness all over it just means that you've turned the device to a level to cause palpitation or movement all over the body or twitching of the muscle the way to best monitor that is to take and turn the machine down and scan over the body and you will find what I've always said is I can take to the size of a softball. I take, the I take a butterfly coil, I move over the body in a sweeping motion covering as much area or all the area uh, as I do and as I move over if I'm on a hip let's say I move over the hip all of a sudden I get palpitation up the upper area towards the sacrum uh, of the animal and I get palpitation. If I move it an inch or so to the right or left or down that palpitation may stop and if that does that allows me to know that the sensitivity and now a doctor would look at that differently and may use it as a diagnostic tool to address what they're trying to do but I can get over that and find those areas of sensitivity then when I've done that and I know that well it's in for example you can put the coil right up on the sacrum of a horse you can put it up there and turn it up just a little bit and you may get more movement on the left hip than you do the right hip which will tell which tells me that some of that sensitivity is coming from the sacral area of the horse if I put it up there and I don't get anything then we're in good shape if I put it up there and turn a little bit and I get it on both sides it can come say it's coming from that area and to take that just a tad further sometimes you'll be up on the hip of the horse and you're moving and you're getting some movement and you go up on the sacral area you don't get that movement so the move the, the sensitivity is coming from somewhere else it's more centered or it's more direct where you're seeing it in the area that you have the movement so that allows you over time to learn more and more about what this device can tell you and read uh, what you're seeing so again if you turn it up a little bit and you move over the body and you're getting movement everywhere that doesn't mean that there's sensitivity everywhere you need to turn it down a little bit and scan and find those particular areas of sensitivity great question we cover it in training very much and we cover it in many many uh, areas that we talk about but sometimes people just as this the person does say uh, I've done it I've seen it and I'm questioning myself and, and you can do that but you will over time realize how to best set the machine and and understand I, I tell people all the time when I've said hey you can do this I can show you how to do this in 20 minutes take the machine put it on this setting and treat the animal or treat yourself you may not see the movement today that you're looking for or you may not have it to a point that you're pushing movement but you are in a situation that you're learning what it will do and you're learning what it will show you in time you'll know turn it up now turn it down here treat it over here and treat it in in different ways we do have someone that's uh texting in so i want to uh, take a look here they didn't put their name but that's okay let's uh, let's give a call here and see uh, who might be wanting to visit with us we have a new phone system so it's uh, interesting here to uh, see how this is going to work 
Uh, so here we go. I've got the number in. We're dialing the number, so we'll see who we got and uh, where we're going to visit about. Good morning. Good morning. Who do I have this morning? Uh, this is Ben. Hey, Ben, how are you? <clears throat> I'm doing, doing good. Great. Uh, I've got a question about the mat. Okay. Uh, um, does the energy uh, come out in one direction like the paddle, or is it just standard like a loop? Well, the uh, that's a great question. Uh, the energy is coming out of both sides of the mat. The, the mats are, are made in what they call an Archimedes coil. The, the paddle is what is called a true Tesla coil because the original Tesla coils were wound from the center of the coil touching. So as the, as the copper wire was spun around, it was basically in contact all the way out, which gives you a beam that's like a more like a very bright spotlight. And, uh -huh. and and so that's how the, the, the paddle will do it and it, it's much more concentrated but it is also coming out of both sides of the paddle now on the digital devices it does come out of one side of the paddle more than the other side but you just figure which side of the paddle <coughs> you're using now on the mat great question Ben it's an Archimedes coil so it starts in the middle and it comes out there might be a, let's say an inch gap between each turn of the coil so it comes out and it basically gets bigger as the mat is wound if you will to the end it's still because it's a coil like that it's still coming out more direct the 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 coils the rings go like a fountain the mats kind of push push the signal out so the mat and the paddle are very similar they're different wines one's an Archimedes and the other one is called a pure Tesla coil and but it does it does pulsate both sides uh, of the mat does that help yeah it does I, I just had a patient uh, tell me that uh, they felt it stronger on one side than they did on the other so I said well Maybe it's like the paddle. I don't. I don't it, know. It is a little bit, and and it does it in in the way it's because what happens is if you turn that mat around, it's spun in a different direction basically, and so that's has a different way that signal is emitting uh, off of the mat, and, and there is a more balanced way. So yes, you could get on a particular person more feeling off one side of the mat than on the other. Okay. Okay. Well, that answers my question. Okay, I appreciate. It. Okay, buddy. So what you want to do is you want to send uh, send them, make sure they got your correct address and uh, what piece of gear you'd like to have, the hoodie or the uh, mug, and uh, send it to support at Magnaway PMF, and uh, we'll get you taken care of. All right, that'd be on your website, right? No, just you just email, just send an email to support at Magnawave PMF. Tell them that you want the uh, hoodie or the mug and the correct address to send it to. Make sure your name is okay. on it. Okay. I see it now. I see it. I see it on it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, buddy. Have a great day. Thank you. Do too. Bye. So there you go. And a good question on the mat. Uh, and we have a question. Let's see here. Is it safe to work on a horse that has been uh, sedated earlier in the day? A horse I was going to work on had been uh, sedated for a dental appointment prior to my arrival. It was approximately three hours from the dead sedation um, for the dental due to the time that I arrived. That's fine. The, the thing that we typically uh, talk about when they're going to sedate a horse or give a medication to a horse, uh, uh, that type of thing, is that, um, let's see here, someone's trying to call, let me tell them I'll call them later. Um, is you want to wait until the the injection or the me medication is metabolized so for example in with the case of the of that injection for dental work as long as it's metabolized it's in the body and you're a few hours out you're fine uh, if if in fact they were going to inject now again in that type situation it's very localized as to typically as to what they're doing if it's a if it's a systemic type of thing like a a, a, a tranquilizer or something like that again you want to wait give them a period of time to digest that to metabolize that and get it into the 
into the bloodstream of the body and let it basically start doing its job. At that point, you're not going to enhance what's going on with it. If in fact they're giving it and you're treating while the metabolization is going on and you're improving the blood flow and the blood oxygenation and the potential absorption of what's happening, then you could help to enhance uh, that type of effect um, that they are that they're looking for with that type of uh, injection or whatever it may be. So the best thing to do is let things metabolize let them do their job in many cases if if it's an antibiotic or it's something that's serious and the docs are, are using you might be well well equipped to wait until the next day to allow them to do for everything to better work its its situation or its course and that's always a safe thing to ask whether it's a small animal veterinarian or your doctor always tell them what you're doing and so they can uh, you know they always say make sure before you change medications or before you add supplements to your uh, regimen of medications that you know what what's going on so there is no uh, interaction between things that you that you don't want so it's always you can't hurt uh, never hurts to err on the side of caution and to talk with your your veterinarian or your doctor in these type situations but as a rule in that type situation after dinner work dental work uh, you would be fine as a matter of fact uh, quite often when they do do dental work with people that have and, and I did this personally when people who have um, uh, wisdom teeth pull or or whatever goes on crowns whatever it may be uh, I've treated often right after the procedure sometimes we treat prior to the procedure to help good blood flow and so the the bleeding is actually controlled a little more it keeps the capillary small and and in good shape whereas after a procedure you can treat to help relieve pain and to keep the inflammation down uh, from those particular type of uh, uh, treatments that are going on. So I hope that answers a question. If you have any additional answers, uh, give me a call and uh, put them up there and I'd be happy to, uh, to answer them. We have another question. What is the protocol for neuropathy? <clears throat> Great question, Tony. Uh, neuropathy is a, uh, a situation, certainly, uh, of the feet and legs. People have neuropathy in their hands to where they get a tingling uh, or they get uh, where they, they don't feel, uh, they, they lose feeling in their hands. More often, uh, as with diabetes and, and other indications can cause neuropathy, but it's more commonly referred to in diabetic uh, types of situations. I have a little circulation issue. My doctor looked at me and, you know, you're you're getting older and you're going to have some circulation issues so uh, I, I work on that but so each person's level of neuropathy is different you may have someone that's had a diabetic neuropathy or a neuropathy type of condition that they've had for a long time and it's pretty severe you're getting results with that are going to be more difficult than someone that's just developing something and you want to improve their overall uh, circulation what I have done uh, personally is I try to treat my, my legs and feet. I do it every day for six to eight minutes per uh, leg and foot just to make sure that I'm good, good, in blood, good blood flow and good circulation. Some people will place their feet, if it's in their feet, in the middle of the large loop, turn it up all the way because they won't really feel it, but they'll be getting a lot of that energy into the feet. Other people who want to feel what's happening is they'll put their foot, rest their foot, the ball of their foot, and the heel, and I suggest that you do both. If you've got a, I'm going to use this horseshoe here, but if you've got a coil here, you want to put the ball of your foot in uh, first, then you want to put your heel of your foot into the coil. And if you're using the butterfly, you'll feel it. Turn it up, to, you want to be comfortable, but turn it up as much as you can to best feel it uh, in the foot and, and have it go. You can place your foot on the on the paddle where you you can move it back and forth across the paddle we are working on an attachment uh, uh, don't want to let the cat out of the bag but it's attachment maybe the size of a, of a tablet a computer tablet that you could rest both feet on have a real nice tight Archimedes coil that you could place it place your feet on there the large mat will do the same thing but we're kind of designing this so someone could really put their hand or both hands on this mat if they wanted to treat an arthritic condition or neuropathy or whatever it may be to be able to place both hands on this nicely uh, coiled mat or like an extra large paddle if you will or put both feet uh, on this attachment it's in the uh, development that's uh, in the final design stages actually so we'll have that hopefully uh, very soon 
But so the protocol, uh, Tony, would be to treat uh, as often as possible. As o- you know, you know what we always say: treat as long as function continues to improve, and treat as often as necessary to maintain it. Uh, I have found uh, one of the things that I've been experiencing with personally is I'm using the uh, the B2 machine, uh, which which can work for eight hours at a pop, and with a ringer type signal. I want to discuss that a little bit here. I don't know how we're doing. Oh, it's only uh, 9:30, so we're in good shape. But uh, I'll place my feet and legs on this mat and, and sleep with it, and, and it's putting out about 500 gauss, which is about 15 times stronger than some of the low power units on the market are. And I have I've had great results with that as well. Now I'll treat my feet with a paddle. Uh, uh, when I want to get ahead of this thing <clears throat> and go for it. So the protocol would be to treat as often as possible and, and as often as necessary to provide the relief uh, that the person is looking for. So Tony, great question. I uh, hope that did it. If uh, you want a little more clarification, send me a text. I'll be happy to call you back and we can uh, uh, talk about it and go from there. Uh, let's see, what have I got here in terms of another um, question? Let me take a look. Okay. Um, is there such a thing as too much PEMF therapy? Great question. Um, it, it, been treating 30-minute treatments specifically just on the area of the hind end. Uh, this is the third day and he's very swollen. Sometimes it's going to take multiple treatments to relieve uh, a situation that you're dealing with. Can you treat a person or a horse or a small animal several days in a row? For sure. Um, What we often talk about is 15 minutes. More than 15 minutes in any one area is overkill. So you could take, if you've got a very sore shoulder and you want to treat your shoulder for 10 or 15 minutes, if you want to go 20, fine. But if you're going to say, I'm going to treat my shoulder for 30 minutes, you only need 8, 10, 15 minutes to adequately treat that shoulder. Now, might you treat your knee? Uh, for another 10 or 15 minutes? Sure. Or your ankles? So you can accumulate some time and treat various areas of the body. Now, can you can you over treat? I know a gentleman, he's in his <coughs> excuse me, he's in his 80s uh, when he first bought his machine. I met him in Florida. He was in his 80s, an avid golfer. He bought uh, the Max machine with a mat that he would lay on every day for 20 minutes and he's done this now for 10 years and he loves it he said and he's not had any issues with doing that and it makes him feel good he uses it quite often before he plays golf or if he if he has a day where he plays and he comes back and he's sore or stiff he'll do it again Uh, the the biggest thing that you want to watch for is the device aids in detoxification so it can be used to help detoxify your body okay so can you over detox sure so you want to make sure that you're not in that type situation how would that occur that would occur let's just say you're on a mat and you're treating your whole torso and you're doing it for 30 minutes a day you don't want to do it every day. You want every so often you want to stop for a couple of days or do it every other day because you don't want to detox yourself, detoxify yourself to the point that you might start taking on flu-like uh, symptoms. You might be flu-like symptoms. You don't feel good, you feel tired, whatever that may be. We experienced that with my wife when we first started treating her herniated discs. We treated her for 30 days and she was feeling better in her arm, but all of a sudden she was getting kind of sluggish and we started doing some research and checking things out and found that we had detoxified her to the point that she was taking on flu-like conditions. We only waited three or four days, went back to treating her again, but and we then treated her only every other day and she was fine. So, you know, we're getting toxins all the time. So, you you, 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 you need some toxins in the body. And, and so, you just don't want to detoxify yourself to the point you take on those conditions. Treating your shoulder or treating your low back or treating your knee every day typically will not lead to that type of situation. Full body, on the other hand, if you're doing it every day for 30 minutes a day, you want to regulate and give yourself a break so your body remains balanced with regard to your toxic or your toxin release. So I hope that uh, hopes helps answer that question. We do have someone that gave us a uh, sent a text here. Let me bring that back up, and we'll give them a call. 
and uh, see please uh, be sure to uh, give me your name when you text so I know who I'm talking to but let's go here and uh, see what we've got um, my screens keep going dark so I need to figure that out but we will okay so let's uh, go here and see who we've got and what the question may be Good morning. Good morning. Who do I have? Hazel Reed. Hey, Hazel, what's up? How are you? I'm good. My brother had a stroke. Okay. And I, I want to treat him ASAP, but I think there's still a blood clot there. What? Uh, how long should I wait? Should I wait for the blood clot to leave, to dissipate? Oh boy, that's a great question. That is a, certainly a question uh, for the doctor. If they're not concerned, uh, if, if it's a uh, um, accumulation of blood and they're not, they're, they want to help it get it moved away and do that, they may feel that this is something that might be beneficial for that. If they are worried about it moving, you want to wait for it to uh, to dissipate. Uh, but that's okay. that is certainly a a doctor's question. I wish I could give you an answer, but I really can't. I it, it's just a matter okay. of of what that situation may be. With that said, people who have experienced strokes and they have a blood loss and then and they control the bleeding and they control what's going to happen with that blood uh, that's that's in the areas, then they the sooner you treat, the better off you may be to help the situation out as far as their overall healing capability and how it's approached and you can look that up on PubMed and or Google uh, stroke uh, work uh, with PEMF therapy but we have found and, okay. and studies have found that the sooner you get to it the the better the result that could be uh, can be had uh, with the therapy so I would just make sure that you know what how do I say this but what someone says is a blood clot may actually be well it's just an accumulation of blood that needs to be moved away and the body will move it away and can if you put the coil over the shoulder let's say and you're treating the shoulders and the head at the same time you're not actually hitting that exact spot that they're talking about and you're helping the blood flow that may the doctors may feel that that could be an aid to help this recovery or clear this area out to do that but you certainly want to have that discussion if they're saying it's yeah, a blood the clot. Problem, the problem is, yeah, the problem is it's in his brain stem. So putting it over his head would not be good idea. Right, because you're, you're talking about in, in the stem area. I, w I would talk to the doc. If, if, if they're not concerned about what's going to happen with it, if they have it under control, then, then potentially uh, that could happen. Now, what to, to, again, to think about this a little bit and to maybe, uh, is he having cognition issues? No, his, he, he thinks well. Um, it's just his body functions. Um, he's gaining some back. It just happened Thursday, and um, they they pulled the ventilator. They didn't think he was going to make it, honestly. But um, he is gaining some back, so there's hope. Yes, and and, and, and I just certainly want to give him as much as he can. I know, and I know that's, and I and I I, I sense your emotion, and I and I understand that. Uh, but you you also could approach this from the standpoint. Again, this is a, a medical discussion, but you could potentially use a, a coil on the lower back or the chest area to okay. continue to enhance the oxygenation, which is important for his recovery. That everything is right. healthy as can be, and and good blood flow normal blood flow. I'm not talking about increased pressure that's going to move anything out of the way, but just good, normalized, healthy blood flow, the body's ability to so have better real, oxygen. So really, really, really low. Well, oh. low is fine. You low, moderate okay. on the on the lower back, just to help the oxygenation and the blood flow of the body, which may be beneficial. Uh, again, conversation in concert with what the doctors want to do, but could help normalize things and, and give him that 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 cellular energy and cellular exercise that his body needs without really approaching the area of damage at this point. Okay. 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 I will. We'll definitely talk to the doctors. Thanks so much, Pat. Okay, and if you'd like to have a piece of gear, the mug or the uh, hoodie, just uh, send your name and address to support at Magnaway PMF. And tell them what you want, and they'll take care of it. 
All right. Thanks, Pat. Hazel, thank you. Our, our best to your, um, is it your brother? Yes, it's my brother. Okay, we'll keep him in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. Wow, great question. Uh, strokes are always, uh, there's been a lot of questions about strokes and how to best approach it. You can, you can certainly Google that and take a look at it and, and, and see and learn. Um, okay, got another question here from uh, Kathleen. Uh, my daughter had a tonsillectomy 11 days ago. She was in so much pain, uh, no, pet, no medication touched the pain, and uh, Percocet had her throwing up. I, I can get that. Applied the lasso over her head, turned up to 10 for about 20 minutes, gradually decreased the frequency over one hour. She was up and completely over the nausea and had gone from pain level of 10 to a 4 all in one hour. Good oxygenized, well flowing blood can work miracles. Can, and, and I don't want to say it's a miracle treatment, but can be very beneficial uh, to what's going on. Um, and Kathleen, thank you for sharing that. She has consequently had very expedited healing as we continue to use it uh, every day. She is grateful to have this device. Well, thank you for sharing that, Kathleen. And, and that's really what we see when, when people go to the, the MagnaWave corporate page and, and be able to see the testimonials or the MagnaWave testimonials group, which you can go to, and, and see testimonials that people are seeing where just the improving the overall body energy. All, all we're doing is supplying an energy to the body. And, the, and, and for some reason, or not some reason, the body likes this. It, it responds to it it allows the body to better oxygenate better blood flow and to for the body to better heal itself we're not healing anything we're just uh, supplying some energy supplement supplementation to the area a doctor can be a little more succinct in that type of description and conversation as to what can be achieved uh, with this type of therapy and uh, operation okay Tim has a question good morning good morning Tim would you mind addressing the MagnaWave waveforms that are produced by analog and the digital units? Great question, uh, Tim, and I'd be happy to do that. <clears throat> the, the signals or the waveforms that are produced by the high power by our devices are, are uh, considered to be ringers. That means uh, they're called impulse signals or ringers. That means they, they fire and then they stop and it's much like uh, ringing a bell it reverberates after the strike so there's a strike and then there's a reverberation that occurs that is that is uh, to the body with a PMF signal is where some of the benefit or belief of benefit comes from now an analog signal uh, just for description purposes uh, as we talk about it when they did some of the NASA studies and Dr. Bob Dennis who holds some patents from doing his NASA study found that the thing that is very beneficial uh, on the healing side of PEMF signals is the slew rate the rate at which the signal or the magnetic field drops off after it fires so the signal fires then it drops off very rapidly and stops that's what makes it a ringer or an impulse type of signal. A hummer is a machine that the signal doesn't stop. It's called sinusoidal. Sinusoidal. So the wave continues. It may go up and come down. Go up, come down, but it it continues. And it's typically a lower powered, much. Um, uh, low, they're all low frequency, but typically in this area, low powered signal, a very low Gauss rate. Now, with that said, to kind of get to the meat of what Tim was talking about, the type of signals. When you're dealing with an analog machine that actually has a spark chamber, there are two electrodes that are in that device, and, and you, you supply it with a signal of electricity, uh, energy that could be up to 10,000 volts, that when it hits into this capacitor and comes out, it actually fires uh, and you've seen it on, on television when they do various things, where they see the, the spark actually go between the two electrodes. That's where the power is generated. The farther apart these electrodes are, the stronger the power. When they're very close, it's a very rapid connection between the two electrodes and the, and the, uh, the power that comes off is less. I compare it to a lightning strike. If you're outside and you see the lightning firing all over the horizon but you don't hear anything and you don't feel anything, then all of a sudden a lightning strikes across the street 
and are down the block and you not only do you see the flash you within a second or two or a second you feel the explosion if you will or the the thunder that that comes through that and your your hair can stand on it i mean you feel everything that's going on that's all that's power that's in the in the in the sky around it so that's what occurs when these signals go off when they're far apart they're close it's right across the street when they're very close together it's like the lightning that's around that you see they're both producing energy and they're both supplying the energy to the earth that is critical to our life and, and our and our survival so it takes all of that to to be beneficial now so on an analog signal with an actual spark I call it sharper as it enters the body when you turn the machine up it's a sharper signal that you feel a little more if you as you turn the machine up and it starts what I call nipping at you to where it could become uncomfortable we need to turn the machine down because the analog signal with the type of spark that it is I, I describe it this way is that it's a very sharp point a very rapid decline and it's that sharp point that's one of the things that you feel now, with a digital signal that is produced by our devices, in many cases it's the same power of signal, but it doesn't take 10,000 volts to make it go. It takes many volts less than that, just a few hundred volts basically. And it does not have the actual electrodes it's, it's created in, through a computer chip and a, and, and a computer program. So it doesn't take the power. So basically what comes out of that machine at that point is what I call a softer signal. It'll come up to a point, but it's like a dull pencil. It's been used. It's been dull pencils written so that the, the line is a little bolder. So my explanation is, is that it comes up. It's just basically rounded on the top, drops off very rapidly. Well, that rounded portion at the top makes it softer as it enters the body, more comfortable as it enters the body. Now, to have that conversation and people have, have asked this question if I take an analog machine and I put it on my shoulder and I turn it up I may turn it up let's say 30 percent and I'm feeling really good and I say that's plenty whereas with a digital signal I may turn it up to 50 percent and now I'm feeling it and it's comfortable so both of them are working both of them will get very similar or the same type of result but the one is more comfortable Plus, I'm getting more energy. Now, that's something that a lot of folks have had problem wrapping. I don't feel it. I don't feel the digital as much as I feel the other one. That doesn't mean that you're not getting the energy that's required or the energy that will be beneficial to the area that you're treating. As an example, I mentioned to you earlier in this program that I had a, a physical therapist in town from Indianapolis yesterday. And she has had a full knee replacement. This particular woman has had a full knee replacement on her left knee, as I remember it. And so I used an analog machine on her knee, and it, was, it got uncomfortable to her quickly. When I moved it to her right knee, she could take it. She has, so both knees are bad, but she can take it much easier and more intensity or more power on the right knee than she could on the left knee with the analog device. When I went to the digital device to show her the difference, she was able to take much more energy on her left, total knee replacement, metal, all that stuff on her left knee comfortably than she could with the analog device. Would When she was done with everything we did, when she was completed with her sections, sessions, she could not believe how, more, how much more comfortable both knees were because I was and, and I was just able to use the digital power a little differently when I used the analog machine I put the large loop over both knees at the same time because I was not stimulating as much tissue with the large loop I was able to turn the analog machine at much higher and treat both knees at the same time so the primary difference between the two signals and Tim I, I hope I'm answering your question uh, uh, the way you want it, the way you wanted to hear it, so it's clear to you, is that the analog signal is a little sharper, and, and it does drop off. It's a ringer type of signal, and it has a, it can have a tendency to become if someone uh, is, is using this a little more uncomfortable, more rapidly. Whereas the digital signal is a softer signal, same type of power range, but it's just received by the body uh, in a more of a softer manner.
People who have used our devices over the years, as I describe it, who grew up with an analog device and they understand the sound, they understand the way the signal is delivered, they like that, they're used to it, they can explain it, they can use it effectively and get the results they want. If they go to a digital device, they kind of shake their head and say, it's different, I don't understand, I don't know what I'm feeling. Well, they have to get used to it. That 50 horse deal or that 50 treatment person deal or that 50 treatment of the small animals. You use them, you get accustomed to what they're doing, and then you're comfortable with the type of delivery that you're receiving. And so that is the difference. The big deal on the signals is the rapid slew rate that Dr. Dennis often talks about that he receives uh, with the signal that he used uh, for the NASA studies to gain the uh, results that he was looking for. Or actually, he wasn't looking for results. He was just looking for something that worked. He didn't believe it was going to do anything at all. He was a skeptic, and it converted him to be a believer in uh, what the therapy could do. So that's the difference. Tim, thanks for asking the question um, and we'd be happy to uh, um, work with you on any other questions that you may have. Okay, Jessica asks a question. Um, when you're introducing people to the MagnaWave who have never heard of it, uh, what success stories do you tell them about the peak, about to peak their interest? Okay, what stories do I use with people to peak their interest? Well, I try to talk about a great question, and um, over the years, I've got a lot of stories personally, and, and more stories than, than maybe somebody who is new to what's going on. What I recommend is watch the videos, listen to the stories, take take my stories, and use them, and because they are not just tied down to one person. My wife's story on her herniated discs can work with anybody that has back issues or herniated disc issues. Stories and what people have shared about knee replacements, <clears throat> Jason Bill and different people who are practitioners, the results that they've had. Go to the research page and search various things. The MagnaWave International Research and Education page where you can search for various indications and get uh, what people have experienced. Or you can go to the testimonials page. You can search there as well and see the testimonials that are shared. But to basically ask your question, you want to you want to do two things. You want to learn all of those various stories. And if you have a story yourself, you want to practice it and learn to say it in a manner that people will look at you and know and believe what you're saying. If you tell a story and you are appearing to be a little, ah, this is a story and this is what I was told and maybe it will do this, they're not going to believe your story. But if you tell them the story, listen, this is what Pat did. Now, they don't have to know who Pat is, but this is what Pat did with his wife. And after this many days, this was the response that they got, and here's what's happened 12 years later. And this can work with you as well. They've got to believe. They've got to see that you are convinced that you know what you believe in. In fact, that's probably more important than the story. Any story and I'm not trying to cheapen stories, but a story will work as long as someone believes and that knows that you believe what you're saying. I always say, if, 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 you, if someone can look at you and see that you believe in what you're doing, they will believe uh, what you're saying. It's just, it's just there. So, um, and there are stories, and, and it needs to be what you're comfortable with. If you're working with small animals more than you want to look in all these places I was telling you and get some small animal stories, how it's been used for dysplasia, how it's been used for the nervous dog, how it's been used for various indications that are there uh, that'll help people do a lot of things. So just pick the story that you're comfortable with. And they're there. Believe me, there are things that you can talk about more comfortably, whether it's a person, a small animal, or a horse, or a cow, or a pig. I mean, there's, there are people that are treating show pigs that got, have some show pig stories that are incredible. And, and you know, and if I'm at a pig show, if I'm, if I'm showing pigs, and this person can talk about how the fluidity of this pig and how they treat this young man's pig, this, and here's the story. This young boy was in 4-H, and he had a pig, and it wasn't doing, but he knew what it could do, and he went and had it treated, and the fluidity, the way that that pig walked and did what they were judging was incredible. He won the competition, and this person who was treating that pig all of a sudden has got a business treating pigs. Go figure. How, how do it know to keep things hot 
<laughs> or keep things cold. But so, you know, I hope that helps. Find a story that you're comfortable with. Learn several stories. Be able to talk about small animals and people and horses and, and share it. And you will accumulate your own stories because these people are going to believe in what you're doing. They're going to let you uh, show them what it'll do when it works for them. Bingo. You've got a story. Don't get something that's so elaborate that somebody has to figure that you read a medical book to do this. You want just to be factual, believable, and share the story. I hope that helps. Uh, any other folks have comments about that? Uh, that I'd love to see them uh, in the comment section. Okay, we're getting close on time. Let's make sure we haven't, haven't had any other text. So we've got two people who are going to get some gear today. We, we think that's cool and, and that's always fun to do. Uh, we're about out of time, but if you have another question, just uh, put it up there and I'd be happy to, uh, to take a look at it and answer it as best I can this morning and uh, give you the answers that you want to have. We got a lot of folks with us. We certainly appreciate uh, our numbers seem to be uh, increasing uh, weekly. I remember back in the beginning when I started doing this, I'd have two or three people and then we'd get a lot of views over the week. But now when we start having uh, 25, 30 uh, f uh, people with us, it just it's really exciting and, and the fact that we are growing with this and people are learning. So we appreciate that you're sharing it and that you're with us here uh, getting your questions answered. Don't forget to uh, check out Alexa uh, for a daily tidbit. You know, it's amazing because I'm, I'm putting these tidbits together and I'm going back and looking at a lot of old videos and a lot of things that I've written over the years. been doing this since 2002. So there's, I've got a lot of information out there that I've dealt with that I'm now going back and finding and say, gee, that's interesting. So I go back and put these Alexa uh, briefings together and it's amazing to me. I was like, gee, I forgot. I, I didn't realize that we could do this, or I didn't realize that this is how the PMF signal is used. And in many cases, you know, people have said things over the years, or they talk about things, and I'm going back now, and I'm even researching deeper. I'm getting on Google, I'm going to the internet, and I'm finding information that is really uh, real. And, and that's what I want to do. So check out Alexa, get the daily flash briefings, you'll learn. And there's a lot of stuff uh, to pick up and it's, it's good if you're interested in just learning about PMF therapy to go there and do that. If you're a practitioner, it's a good way to get reminded as to what will be beneficial for you to help uh, with your practice. So don't forget Alexa. Uh, check that out and uh, we certainly appreciate your being here. We're about out of time. I don't see any other questions. I just don't want to sit here and and uh, talk, talk, talk. I appreciate the uh, likes. Oh, look, so we got a question. Uh, Krista asks a question. It's 17 degrees here this morning. Do I need to be careful of my Macs getting too cold and then turning it on? We've never had as much issue with cold uh, as we have. We've had some issues with heat, uh, and I'll kind of cover that very quickly. But typically, no. Uh, it, it, you know, it's best to keep the unit in a in a room temperature environment. It's just anything's better. You, it, things aren't getting so cold that they could break and so on and so forth. But to turn it on and use it when it's cold, uh, not really an issue, never has been an issue. I think we had one machine one time that we couldn't figure out what was going on and it turned out to be a temperature issue uh, when it was cold, but it would not work. And it was a repair that needed to be made. But on a day-to-day -day basis for the last uh, 20 years or 18 whatever years, it's it's been uh, cold is not an issue. Heat, on the other hand, if you have a machine in your car and it's 120 degrees outside and you get it out, it gets up to 160 degrees in that machine. And if it gets too hot, it'll stop. If it's at 120 degrees when you turn it on and you run it for 20 or 30 minutes, it might stop. It might get too hot and need to cool down a little bit. Best way to do that, take the machine out of the car, plug it in, turn it on, let the fan run for a couple of minutes, and you should be in pretty good shape at that point. We did get another person that came in. Let's try this out. We're about out of time, but let's do it anyway. Let's see who we got here. Always fun. Want somebody to get some more gear. Um, so let's see who we've got. Okay. Don't forget, folks, when you send that text, put your name on it. And... Um, did we go? Uh oh, didn't go. I did it. Uh, let's try it again. I don't know why it didn't dial. Let's try it again. Uh, let's get rid of it. Okay, let's try this. URL is disabled. What's that mean? Looks like for some reason my phone has quit working. 
So let's do it on this one. We'll do it over here. We can do it. We can do this. Uh, let's get this up here. Oh, it's the 17 degrees question. So uh, perfect. So uh, same question. Uh, appreciate that. So if you want to get your gear, your uh, hoodie or your mug, uh, text your name and full address to support at magnawavepemf.com and we'll get you the gear uh, that you'd like to have. So, I don't understand what's going on with my phone. Uh, disabled on the call. URL's not working. That's the way it goes with the internet as we do things. So listen, thank you for joining me. We'll be back here next week with the MagnaWave office hours. It's always fun and uh, I learn and I hope you learn at the same time. Have a great week and uh, thanks for being here. Wave on and uh, make the choice to keep yourself well kept and healthy with MagnaWave. Have a great day. Bye-bye.